Once the aircraft has landed, it will require underwing refueling. The refueling vehicle will leave the depot and drive through the security check from land side to air side. The driver will have the appropriate driving skills required to safely manoeuvre the vehicle on the airfield. The vehicle should not be obstructed by any other ramp user, especially during refuel operations. The refuel staff will check with the flight crew the fuel amount to be uplifted. This can be either by verbal conversation or by signage. You will see that the PTO and the interlocks have been engaged. So we have the correct bowser and the correct signage all within regulations to refuel the aircraft. The aircraft and the vehicle would have been bonded before the refuel crew takes the hose to be connected onto the aircraft. The signage next to the refuel point shows the fuel type, i.e. Jet A1, and the maximum pressures, 50 psi or 3.5 bars. The quantity to be uplifted will be entered into the aircraft refueling panel and the correct valve and switches operated. If valve and switch training has not been completed, then the flight crews will have to operate these themselves. Refuel staff should be monitoring the DP gauges on a regular basis during the refuel and the free movement check should be completed. Once everybody is happy, the final figures will be cross-referenced with the paperwork and the fuel panel and the fuel truck gauges. Fuel vents located on the wings should be unobstructed at all times, so personnel or vehicles should not be parked underneath these vents. Also, ground power units should not be connected or disconnected during the refuelling process. Aircraft fuel caps should be replaced after refuelling, including all fuel panels. All hoses should be correctly stored back into the storage facilities on the trucks themselves. Once the product has been offloaded, the checks must be completed on the vehicle itself and also the paperwork. As we've mentioned before, documentation and service records are very important. They will walk all the way around the vehicle, checking all compartments are secure and safety equipment is still in place. Each vehicle will have the correct safety signage for the product being carried and all emergency contact numbers and product details are clearly visible in case of any accidents or incidents occurring. The vehicle should be in good roadworthy condition so the driver will also be checking tyres for wear and damage, lights and general condition of the vehicle. Today we've been looking at the fuel operation and how important it is to have quality fuel on specification, clear and bright, no water or dirt or sediment. I hope you've enjoyed the training session and you're able to pass this on to your rescue training team and the staff.